what I call my yeah. How old are you? Um, 14. Okay. This is a 14 year old patient that presented to us with Tourette's. Hey! Okay. So what all? What are the tics that you experience? Um, I have a lot of neck twitches, as you can see. Um, I usually just have to crack my neck. I have to keep flipping the hair out of my face because it touches my eyes and that just bugs me. Um, hey! I yell a lot. I have a few verbal tics. I have to say things. I haven't been doing those lately though. I've been really doing the necks, which is a lot lately. So. Keep doing. Keep explaining to the audience. Um, I have some kicking and hitting ticks. I don't actually hit people, but I have to hit walls and stuff, mostly to give off pressure. Um, I bump into stuff a lot. Uh, sometimes I have to bang my knuckle off of something until it hurts. If it doesn't hurt, then I have to keep doing it. Um, I have to, lately I've been doing my, I have to flex my bones and my muscles and stuff. Um, sometimes I have to like squint and make faces. Um, usually when I look in the mirror, I have to. Just because I have to see myself do it. I have to do it in a certain way. Otherwise, I have to keep doing it. It has to be perfect, or I have to keep doing it. It also really has to do with OCD, my Tourette's. That's pretty much why I have to get it perfect. So. Hey! Usually when I'm nervous and stuff, or if I have more attention, I do more ticks. So. It doesn't matter if it's good attention or bad attention, so. Um, I do have a lot of fun with Tourette sometimes. With friends, we just joke about it and stuff. It's, it's, it's fun being in an environment where kids can accept you for who you are. I was lucky to be in an environment like that. All the world's not that easy, right? You get cussed out a lot and looked at. Yeah. Um, I love acting and stuff, but I went to this theater in Spring Grove, and um, this girl actually came out and cussed me out because she was upset that I was ticking during the play. But um, I just, I just explained to her I had Tourette's, and I went on with it. I, I try not to let that sort of thing bother me so that I can just live on with my life happily. It's not good to focus on that sort of thing. Um, I did have depression from Tourette's around 2007 because I used to let it hit me hard, so I just fo stopped focusing on that. So. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna do the best we can for this young boy. Fortunately, he uh, uh, understands his problem because he has an uh, IQ of 128. Uh, these uh, patients are not low IQ children. They're very, very smart trapped in this disease, and this is what the dental profession should be doing to help these children out all the time. This young man is getting his lower appliance today. We just put it in a few moments ago and you can see it, it has caused a diminution of his uh, facial tics and his vocal tics and so on although they're still not completely gone they will go away over the next couple of days you can, you can see that it's hardly barely noticeable in his mouth actually this is a repositioning TMJ appliance because he has bilateral reducing 
disc displacements in his jaw. I believe underlying all these Tourette's patients, at least every single one that I've ever seen, they all have an underlying internally deranged temporomandibular joint, which has been totally missed by the Tourette's community because they've misdiagnosed all these cases because they have not evaluated them from a TMJ perspective, nor have they taken TMJ imaging studies, particularly MRIs. Uh, open. This is what it looks like. You can see that it's got uh, uh, a highly indexed occlusal uh, spaces for his upper occlusion. It's got these uh, ailerons on it to elevate his tongue. That opens up his throat. One of the first things the patient notices is, is that their breathing increases. Uh, tests show their oxygenation and the oxygen level of their blood rises when they wear this in because their throat opens, their epiglottis moves forward, uh, uh, and their tongue position changes, etc. And this just um, gets placed on his lower back teeth as held in place by these clips and the patient just puts it in and it clips on his teeth and then he just bites into it open wide. The best thing to do is initially open wide and then close down into it bite like that and that's all there is to it and that sets his jaw in the correct maxillomandibular relationship to the base of his skull decompressing the tissues of his temporomandibular joints at the skull base. Up. Say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, something on that order, if you can make it back. Okay? Once it's been in, can you make any or discern any differences in your uh, breathing? That's usually the first thing the breathing, uh, the decrease in any urges to tick or. Um. Bark. Just tell, speak to the audience. Well, I have this foot tick where I have to crack my ankle all the time. Like, every time I walk, every time I sit. And um, since I've had this bracelet, I haven't done it nearly more than twice. And that's really awesome. I have barely done my neck twitches. And they've been hurting a lot lately because I've been doing them so much. But um, with the breathing, I actually thought my breathing was normal like everyone else. But when this thing was put into me, I just felt like clear, like I was breathing air for the first time. And I just felt so good in my throat, like it wasn't clogged or anything. It just feels open. It's just, it's really awesome. Okay, good.